Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the Watt Cycle 100 amp hour 12 volt battery. This is a lithium iron phosphate battery. It's 1280 watt hours, so you're 12.8 nominal voltage on this one. And Watt Cycle actually has a couple different 12 volt options. This is the Mini, as you guys can see. Teeny tiny little battery with a carry strap here. They actually had these a while, but they came out with the Smart Edition, so you can hook to your Bluetooth on your phone with this battery. And I can show you guys the app. It has all the basics. So you've got your cell voltages, cell temperatures, uh, your state of charge, and then you can actually change settings on there too, but it asks for a password. I didn't bother messing with any of that this time. Comes with the basics. You have two different manuals. There's a Bluetooth manual and also the battery manual with all the info. And again, with the basics, you have the M8 bolts that come with it and some covers for the terminals. They actually send a longer set of M8 bolts also if you're going to be doubling up stuff on the terminals, you probably need them. You can put up to four in parallel and four in series with this battery. I actually don't ever recommend people using 12 volt batteries in series. You'd need a balancer at that point to be able to keep everything right. I would prefer just, if you want 48 volts, just buy a 48 volt battery. You can usually get these a little bit cheaper than the 48 volt battery, but yeah, a lot less hassle if you have a 48 volt pack. So I actually expect good things from this battery. I watched a review from Roll2 Videos. If you guys have seen his channel, I can tag it in the video here. And based off of his video, the build quality actually looked really good. And this is a buzz it. And this is a budget battery for sure. It's pretty surprising to me that they are selling batteries for this cheap at this point. Just like a year, year and a half, two years ago, they were double this price at least. And just a little while back, they had some apologies to make at this price point, but they don't have those anymore. So they do have Bluetooth on this one now, where before a lot of the battery makers didn't have that, or they wouldn't have under temperature protection. So under 32 degrees, the BMS shuts this battery off, or at least theoretically, I'm gonna be testing that here in the video. Yeah, before, if you wanted a battery close to this price point, they didn't have that. And a lot of suppliers still don't have that, and which doesn't make any sense to me. Most of the BMSs come with that feature. So it seems to me the margins must be extremely tight if that's the thing you're going to shave off of your list there to be able to sell to people. To me, I don't think people will mind spending an extra 10 or 20 bucks on some cold temperature protection. So yeah, I'm gonna do a capacity test on the battery here. I'll do, like I said, I'll do some cold temperature protection and I'll pop it open. We'll check and make sure that build quality is similar to what I saw in that other video I mentioned. All right, I'm ready to get started. I'm ready to break some stuff up here. <laughs> All right, I got the battery charging up now. They actually sent me this 20 amp charger also. Seems pretty nice, pretty basic. So I don't really want to delay too much. I've got a lot of other things going on. So I'm gonna put this other charger on there also. It's another 20 amp charger. That way we can get up there to 100% sooner. All right, once again, I have my highly sophisticated setup here to test the capacity of the battery. I charged it fully and so we can check on it here in a few hours. I've got the Victron Phoenix 12 volt inverter. It's discharging to a heat lamp outside of the shop through this extension cord here. That way I don't have to heat the shop up. So the test is done and excellent. We got just over 101 amp hours of discharge. Not an easy battery to get into. Look, I even nicked my finger there. The things I'll do for you people. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Huh, there we go. Doesn't look like I ruined anything inside. So this is IP65 rated. I don't think I told you guys that. And check this out. They used, it looks like rivets or some kind of screws or whatever to go to the case down below. That would be why it was not easy to get apart. And there is no extra space in this case. Absolutely none. This is very, very tight. Look at this, they actually have a little structural bar over top of the BMS to give it space and to protect it, I would imagine. That's actually pretty neat. So the conductor is coming off of the battery cells to the BMS. There's two eight gauge here for the negative. The positive, I can't tell. Um, I know, I don't think there's any behind the heat shrink there, but I can peel that back a little bit. It looks like either a five gauge or a four gauge. I I think it's a five gauge. And just like one of the other battery builds I just looked at, you're gonna to wanna to definitely make sure that you look at the manual to see whether the batteries can be laid on their side. 
in these minis and in some or other battery builds, the top of the cells is actually gonna be on a different side. Like the last battery I looked at, the top of the cells was here on this face. The top of these cells are right here. So you would not wanna have these on their back side right there. So something to consider. Although they did kind of plan for that. If you were to have it right here, the terminals would be up on top. So yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't even read the manual as far as placing these on their sides, but yeah, if anybody's gonna get one of these, do not place it down facing down that way where the terminals are gonna be faced down because that that is the top of the cells right there. Ugh. Nice. All right, so simple build, but not bad. So we've got fish paper around the top end. Then we have these insulator strips here and they run the perimeter. And then we have two different metal sides and they use those for compression. So you've got these compression straps along the sides. And these little tiny baby cells that they use for the mini batteries are so funny. So laser welded bus bars. Uh, yeah, like I said, simple. The leads are taped. I would prefer to have these insulated here all the way up to the ends, but not bad. They have it insulated at the pinch point there up over the ridge. I know I said it before, but it does bear repeating that it's just hard to believe that you can get builds like this for, well, really with discounts, I think less than 200 bucks. There really isn't a reason for people to be using forklift batteries and old different lead acid batteries when you have options like this now. Of course, you know, you do have the option of going fancier. You can get battery communication with some 12 volt batteries and other options. But yeah, if somebody's wanting to do something on the cheap, it's pretty hard to beat something like this. So for the cold temperature protection test, I put it in a fridge first at like minus four. I still needed to review that fridge, but anyway, it's very cold here, the battery now. And I actually like doing it this way because I can check the cell temperatures through the app. And you can see there the it's below freezing on the cell temperatures. So the charger light right there, once I hook the charger up and plug it in, it should start out red and then it'll blink red and green and that means that the bms is not allowing a charge into the battery so yeah it works you can see the light is blinking red to green and you can also see it in the app there too that the charging is disconnected so yes the cold temperature protection does work on the battery so last thing i wanted to do is test the output of this little battery and i'm actually powering a charger for my 12 volt system. So a little 18 amp charger. And I am at the limits of this inverter. It actually shouldn't be outputting this much, but it's a tough little unit. And the battery is actually outputting over 100 amps and has been for a while now. I still don't have any issues with it. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to stress test a little bit, see if it could take it. So you can see on the app and the Victron app, we're over 100 amps and it's handling it fine. And it's been raining for days and days. I think this is the sixth day of rain so far here. So I figured I might as well do a stress test with this little charger. And I have it just hooked up into the bus bars of my rack batteries. All right, it can obviously discharge at 100 amps or just a smidge over like I am now. I would never recommend people stress it that much, but in a pinch, you could get a lot of power out of one small battery. All right, guys, well, that's gonna about do it. This guy looks a little worse for wear because of all the pieces I had to snap off to get the lid off. It was uh, not easy to get into, for sure. For this price, I'm actually really impressed with the build quality. That's one of the reasons why I responded to their email because I'd seen some previous reviews on this battery, like I mentioned. And yeah, the price is crazy to me. I think uh, they're asking 200 or something like that, but if you use the discount codes I have, then I think it gets you down closer to like 170 or something like that. Plus the thing is teeny tiny. So if somebody needed cheap 12 volt storage and they only had a tight area, this is a good option. Plus they wouldn't have to rely on a shunt or something like that for cold temperature protection. The battery has it itself. Well guys, I need to get a larger 12 volt inverter to be able to test batteries like this. It would actually be neat to hook it up to a mini split or something like that and use some of that extra storage. That way I could keep cycling batteries like this and test them on the long term also. I'm thinking of just going with another larger Victron.
Anyway guys, like I mentioned in the video, I know a lot of it is price, but some of it is preference for people, so who they're buying from. And WattCycle is a fairly small company. I will say I get quite a few emails from different companies, and these people are not pushy. They were actually really nice people. So hopefully that speaks to the quality of the company itself. So guys, thanks for watching and stay tuned. Anyway, so hopefully that speaks to the quality of the company.